Welcome to the new and improved chat triggers tutorials. I've wanted to remake these for a while now because the old three tutorials are pretty outdated and it's about time for a proper refresh. Although I will be making these tutorials for the latest chat triggers 3.0 beta, for these more basic tutorials it will translate to the 1.8.9 version of the mod. You can find chat triggers over at chattriggers.com and the beta either directly from the GitHub or you can grab it over on ModRinth. You will need to install the proper mod loader for the version that you want to use beforehand. The links for everything will be down under the like and subscribe button in the description. If you are just looking to use the modules that somebody else made, head over to chattriggers.com and find the module that you want to import and run the appropriate command. This tutorial is over for you, so go and have fun. If you are a little bit more adventurous and want to learn how to create your own modules, let's get started. All right, to start, we are just going to run CT files, which is going to pull up our modules folder. And from there, we can create a new folder with the name of the module we're going to create. Now that we got your text editor of choice to open up, I prefer VS Code. We're going to create a new file called metadata.json. This file is going to tell basic information about the module that we are creating. But for now, all we care about is our entry. So we're going to specify the entry as index.js. Go ahead and save that. Create a new file for index.js. And here's where our actual code is going to be. From here, we're going to register a new chat trigger, define a function, and we will set the criteria. Let's go ahead and grab some chat from the game so we can run CT dump to get a copyable message. So we'll copy that. Add that to our chat criteria. You can see that it copied the color codes as well. We can go ahead and change those to ampersand. And from here, we're gonna edit this just a little bit to add a username instead of my name. And this is how we define a basic variable in the criteria. We're going to do the same thing with the message. So these are going to be passed along to the function that we defined up here, this arrow function. So we can define them up here, username and message. And just for now, we will write a simple debug message. So we're going to say chatlib.chat, .chat, give it a username output the username and the message we will do the same thing so now when we save that we will run ct load and now when we type hi we can see our debug message so here you can see that I added a little bit of JavaScript now. I added this event at the end of the arguments. So the chat event is always going to be the last argument that comes through. We're going to check the username, check the message. We'll cancel the event if those match, and we're going to replace it with our own message. So now if Zombie, who is my friend, we'll go test this on him in a little bit. Um, says no in chat, it will replace his chat message with yes. So let's go give it a try. Okay, so now that we have that loaded into the game, we'll hop in the realm. Hopefully he is on. He is on. Okay, so I will send him a question that I know he's going to answer. And we will see if the trigger works. Ah, look at that. So it replaced the chat message and it totally worked. So now you know the basics of getting started with chat triggers. All right. I hope you enjoyed. We'll see you for the next tutorial.